Do you need a customizable solution to manage impacts of different kinds of effects, such as bullets, footsteps, onto a variety of different surfaces? We're gonna take a look at how you can implement a surface management system that allows you to very easily customize and reuse different effects for different impact types on different surfaces. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. I'm gonna be honest, this is gonna be a little bit more of an advanced tutorial than I do a lot of the time, we're not going to go in depth into each step by step. How do you implement this? I'm going to give you more of an overview of how you can implement this. We want this to be both customizable and reusable where possible. So that way we don't have to recreate a bunch of new different particle systems for the exact same thing. I'll give you a quick overview. Of what does the system look like? We're going to define scriptable objects for which surfaces can be hit, which effects can be played, which impact type we want to use. So like a bullet, a sword impact, a fist, whatever you need it to be a footstep, doesn't matter. Whenever an impact is made, we'll ask the surface manager to play an effect based on that impact type at this particular location on a particular game object. That way, all of our code only needs to know a surface manager exists and tell it, hey, this is the hit that happened. You figure out what to do. We're going to define all of these through scriptable objects, actually, so that way we can reuse them if we have multiple different objects that need to have the same impact type. We have a bunch of different textures that all are the same surface type. Maybe we have five different kinds of grass. We can assign all of those grass textures to the same surface, and then we don't need to create grass one, grass two, grass three, grass four, grass five. The same goes for the effects. We want reusable effects. That way we can have one single particle effect, or if we need different ones, we can also use different ones for all of the grass surfaces. To make it a little bit easier, because I know there are a lot of different scriptable objects that we're gonna be talking about in this video, we're gonna walk through the process of implementing a new surface using the Surface Manager. That's just the easiest way I can think of for you to understand the system and walk through the steps of how do you create a new one, how do we integrate it into our game. I'll also talk a little bit about how you can extend the system in case you need more effects other than what I've provided here, because I only have spawning an object and playing some audio. In your game, maybe you need like a state machine change an animation playing, I don't know, whatever you need to happen, you can add a new effect type for that. And remember, the full project is going to be available on GitHub, so you can download that project and follow along as well. The only caveat I want to say is I cannot give you the audio files that I used here because I purchased those off the asset store. Those are not open source or public domain assets. Before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game dev dreams become a reality. If you want to help support that mission, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose whichever tier you're most comfortable with. You'll start getting some cool perks like getting your name up here in the section and getting a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Paul Barry, and Matt Parkin, I am so grateful for your support. Thank you. Let's take a quick look at how I have this scene set up so far. We've got two objects here in the back with concrete looking textures on them, a floor and a wall with some railing in the front and then two Pro Builder cubes. These Pro Builder cubes have three materials. The default Pro Builder material that's been colored, a metal material on top, and then on the side, I have that same concrete material that we have at the background and the floor. There's also a pretty ugly terrain here that has some other texture on it, some like stone-ish looking texture, just because we want to have the surface manager working for both regular renders and a terrain. On the surface manager, so far I've only set up two surfaces, one that works on the concrete wall, one that works on the concrete floor, and a default surface as well. So that way if I shoot something that is not one that I have a surface defined for, it's going to spawn this particle system. And we're going to go over what each of these things in the inspector is and how to create a new one even. So first, if I start left clicking, you'll see that I start shooting and the concrete starts spawning particle systems based on the concrete texture. Cool. There's also little decals that you can see there. But if I shoot this terrain, there's a different particle system that plays. Same if I shoot the metal. Let's go into the surface scriptable objects. In here, you can see I have a bunch of scriptable objects already created. This is actually how we got all of those effects that you already saw. Let's walk through each of these types one at a time to see what do they do and what are the concepts behind them. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the simple click to shoot, but this is really important to see how do we handle bullet impacts or really any impact. This is almost the exact same thing as what we did with a bouncing bullets video. If you haven't checked that one out and you don't know how to do a raycast shooting and you don't know how to make the bullets bounce, highly recommend that video. That was a lot of fun to make. Link in the description, card on the screen. So I'm gonna skip over most of this, but the key thing is when the application is focused 
and we are holding the left mouse button, we will try to shoot. When we shoot, we make sure we can shoot, we spawn bullet trail, we do a raycast and we pass to the spawn trail function some important information like which collider did we hit, where did we hit, hit normal of where we hit, and the triangle index. That's the little bit different piece from before is we're now adding in that triangle index because you'll see in a little bit, we really need that whenever we're hitting a mesh with multiple renderers. On the spawn trail function, this is really the exact same as before. We're just moving a trail from the gun location to the hit location. And then if we've made impact, we're using surface manager dot instance because surface manager is a mono behavior singleton. We will then call this function handle impact that we're going to look at in just a second, passing in the hit collider game object, the hit point, the hit normal, the impact type, and the triangle index. We're going to get more into what is the impact type in a little bit. That's basically in this case is describing that, hey, we are shooting a bullet. So this bullet is what's making impact. And the surface manager is going to handle what to do when a bullet makes impact with a particular surface. That's why it's called the surface manager. Let's hop over there and check out what does that do. The surface manager is a singleton mono behavior where we're going to make sure that we only have one of them active in the scene at a time. There are only a couple of types here, a list of surfaces, a default pool size, and a surface for default surface. Let's see what is a surface type. This is a simple class that has a texture, the albedo texture, and a surface surface. That's what you saw in the inspector a second ago, where we had a texture that we would assign something to. And all this class is doing is unioning an albedo texture to something that we're going to describe a particular surface with. If we open up the surface, we'll see that's a scriptable object. And all it is is a list of impact type effects. And those impact type effects are this public class you can see inside here of surface impact type effect that links an impact type in a surface effect together. Let's start with the impact type. You can see that an impact type actually isn't anything. The important thing here is we want it to be a discrete instance of a scriptable object because we want to do some equality checks on this thing. So for our case, we actually only have bullets, but maybe you also want to consider adding footstep sounds into your game. You would just create a new scriptable object of impact type called footstep and then describe what should happen on that previous class whenever that impact type is made on a particular surface. So the surface effect is going to describe to us what should happen whenever this impact type occurs on the surface. And remember the surface is a scriptable object. So on the surface effects, so far I only have spawn object effects and play audio effects. I was trying to come up with more interesting things to put in here, but for this demo that I put together, at least there wasn't really a lot of sense to putting anything else because everything could be achieved between these two effect types. Obviously, if you're implementing this in your own game, you can add as many different types as makes sense. Maybe you need some state change effect or shader change effect, something like that to modify the state of the game some other way. As you can imagine, the spawn object effect spawns an object. I've added in a probability here and the ability to randomize the rotation. I'm not using the randomized rotation, but it is a functionality that's supported in this demo system. The probability will just tell us how likely it is for something to happen. If it's at one, it will always happen. If it's at zero, it will never happen. And we're just going to instantiate this prefab at that location. On the play audio effect, you can imagine it's going to play some audio. The way it's set up now is it will spawn the audio source prefab at the hit location and it will play a random audio clip from this list of audio clips based on the volume range. So you can have it play less loud or more loud depending on how you want it to work. If you set the volume range X to be one and Y to be one, then we will always play a sound at full volume. If you set it to zero and one like we have here, it will play at some random volume between zero and one. I'll quickly go through how do we handle the impact and how do we use the handle impact function on the surface manager. You can see the surface manager only has five functions inside of here. The main one is handle impact. If you watched the video I did a little bit ago where we were playing footstep sounds based on the terrain object that we were walking on, where we first found out how to get the active texture on a terrain, we're going to use the exact same code that we used over there to figure out which texture is active. And we're going to do something based on those active textures. So the first thing we do is check are we hitting a terrain? If we are, then we're going to go ahead and get those active textures from the terrain. I'll just briefly show you what this does. I don't really want to go explain this whole thing again because that was, I don't know, like a 15 minute video explaining how to do that. There's a link in the description card on the screen if you want to see the full details about it. All this is doing is finding every active texture on that terrain at this particular point adding it to this list of active textures and including what is the alpha of this because we may want to do something like perhaps if we only have a 25% visibility, maybe that should affect how loud the sound is or something like that. We'll then iterate over each of those active textures, find out which surface is active, 
and then play all of the effects for that active surface. And in the case where maybe we didn't find that surface, it's not defined, we haven't defined a texture in the surface manager for that particular texture, we're gonna play the default effects. What happens in the play effects? All we're doing here is iterating over all of the lists in the surface effect and doing whatever they should do. So if you were gonna add some new behavior into a surface effect, you would add that code here. For what we're doing so far, we're spawning some object. We're checking if the spawn object effect probability is greater than the random value, meaning we should do it. We will use an object pool to create a new instance, make it face the direction of the hit normal, maybe randomize the rotation, and that's it. A little bit farther down, we will go over all the audio effects and do exactly as I was talking to you earlier about. We're gonna use an object pool to get an audio source at that location, get a random clip from our available audio clips and play that based on both the sound offset, which in this case is how active that texture was on the terrain and that random range of the volume range we were talking about on that play audio effect. Finally, we start encouraging to disable the audio source after it's done because having a bunch of audio sources in our scene is very, this is messy and adds some overhead. There's some overhead with having an audio source in general. So we wanna get rid of those as fast as possible. The last thing to look at here is what happens when we hit just a normal renderer. So we'll try to get a component renderer. We'll get the active texture from the renderer and then do the exact same thing we did above with when we hit the terrain. But in this case, we only are gonna get one texture back because we only wanna get the texture from the renderer that we hit and those renders generally only have, well, if we're using a standard shader, at least we're only talking about the one albedo texture. If you're using some material where maybe you have some blending, then you would have to do something similar to what we did on the terrain, but we're talking only about the standard shader in this tutorial, or the Pro Builder shader actually also works. That's technically what we're using on the Pro Builder cubes. Anyone that doesn't have the mix mapping feature. So on this one, what we're gonna do is get the mesh filter for the render that we have. If the sub mesh count is one, then we're only gonna return that main texture and we're gonna be done. That's the else block here. But what happens when we have multiple sub meshes? Remember that there's only one material per sub mesh in Unity. So what we have to do is find out which particular sub mesh are we hitting, then we can get the material from that and get the albedo texture from that material. Unfortunately, it's not super straightforward on how to get that. So the only way I know how to do that is to make sure that whichever particular triangle that we hit belongs to the sub mesh. So what we'll do is find out which triangles did we hit based on the triangle index that we got from the Raycast hit earlier. Then we will iterate over all the sub meshes, all of their triangles and check does this particular triangle equal the triangle that we hit a second ago? If it is, then we'll get that material and return the main texture on it. Let's hop back to the Unity editor and see how do we create these scriptable objects that we just reviewed and make them get used by the surface manager. Remember that there was a hierarchy to these scriptable objects. First, we needed a surface. So let's do something where we're gonna make some bullet impact sounds and a particle system play whenever we hit the metal object. The first thing that we need is a surface. So I'll right click, create, impact effects, surface. I'll name it metal surface. Then I need to add some impact type effects. Let's create one of those scriptable objects. We'll create a surface effect by going to create impact effects, surface effect, and I'll name it metal surface effect, bullet impact. Because remember, we want this surface effect to apply to whenever a bullet impact is made, not necessarily when something like a footstep effect is made. On the metal surface, I'll click the plus to the impact type effects and drag that new metal surface effect there. Remember that it also wants an impact type, so I'll drag the bullet impact type that I created earlier to this reference. If you need to create a new one, all you can do is right click, create, impact effects, impact type, and then name it whatever you want. For example, footstep impact. Now that we have a metal surface that has some metal surface effect with a bullet impact type, let's define what effects should happen whenever that impact type is made. I'll right click, create impact effects, spawn object effect. Let's do a spawn metal particle system effect. I'll also create one for a decal, and then I'll create an audio effect for playing the sound whenever that happens. We'll start with the particle system. I already have a particle system made that I got from the Unity Particle Pack with very few modifications. I'm gonna always want it to spawn whenever the bullet impact is made, so I'll leave the probability as one. And I do not wanna change the rotation because I want it to be based on the normal of the object that I hit. For the bullet decal, the exact same thing applies. Now for the play audio effect, I have a bullet impact audio source. It's just an audio source prefab. There's not really anything fancy about that. It's basically a default audio source. 
For the volume range, I'm gonna set it to be 0.5 to 0.75. And finally, the audio clips. And remember, I'm sorry, I can't give you guys these audio clips. These are from an asset pack that I purchased, so I cannot include that in the repository. So none of these sounds will be available to you if you clone this project. But I will include an affiliate link in the description to this asset pack on the asset store. I found this to be a really high quality audio pack that I use in my game. Now I've created all those scriptable objects, and I know it kind of seems like this is a lot of work to get this going, but this really makes you have a dynamic, flexible system that allows you to reuse effects across different impact types and different surfaces if needed. Now that we've created all those effects, we need to add it to this metal surface effect. On the spawn object effects, I'll add two spawn object effects, the spawn bullet decal effect and the spawn metal particle system effect. On audio effects, I'll just do the one for the play audio effect for metal on a bullet impact. The last thing to do here is go to the surface manager and add this new surface type. On the surface manager, I'll click plus to add a new one. For the albedo, I'm going to change it to be the metal texture. And for the surface, I'll change it to be the metal surface. That should be all that we need to do. Let's now start shooting this stuff to see how it works. As I shoot, when I hit the metal railing, we'll see that there's a different bullet impact effect that's kind of sparky. We'll see a little decal appears on top of that metal railing. And there's some different audio that plays that's different from what happens when we hit the concrete. It's also working, remember that these Pro Builder cubes have metal on top, the concrete on the left, and then the default Pro Builder material on the front. As I hit those, you'll see that we have the default whenever I hit the Pro Builder on the front, the concrete on the side, and the metal impact still on the top. I hope it was clear how to use a service manager to implement new textures, new effects, and sound effects whenever a bullet or any other type makes impact with that surface. I know some of it maybe seems a little bit over-engineered from the first pass, but really what this allows us to do is have configurable and reusable pieces of effects, impact types, surfaces, all of these kinds of things by having them made in scriptable objects. The way it's designed is really to allow you to be able to reuse these effects whenever possible so you don't have to create so many different ones. The only reason that you should have to add more code here besides to actually integrate the surface manager into your game is if you want to add new types of effects that are not spawning objects or playing sounds. Like I was saying earlier, things like a state machine change, doing something to a shader. Those kinds of things would be new effect types that you'd have to add into the surface effect class and create a new scriptable object for, just like we have the spawn object effect scriptable object and the play audio effect scriptable object. If you wanted to make a shader change, you could have something like a shader change effect scriptable object that you can then model the same way that we've done for the spawn object or the audio source one to make it modify some property of the shader whenever we've made impact there. I'm totally sure this does not fit every single use case, but what you can do is use this as a foundation to build on whenever you have those new use cases that are not covered here. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.